Passengers, we have a message from New South Wales Trains Management for you. Trains are fucked, y'all. They're really <laughs> fucked up, and that's what the problem is. You've all been asking what's wrong with the trains, and the answer is they're fucked. We're sorry. <laughs> Management has stopped sending us advice. They're just sending us gifts of cats and the phrase, the trains are fucked, y'all. And that's what the problem is. Did you, did you hear that all of this disaster was caused by a balloon? Yeah, balloons <laughs> fucked up the trains so bad, and they're fucked now. We're really sorry. Someone let a balloon onto the trains, and it fucked everything. <laughs> everything's fucked up. It's so, so bad. Our entire transport system can go down thanks to one balloon. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently then the balloon made the computers crash, which made the trains <gasps> stop, which dear. made the people die, which made the zombies come out, and everything is all fucked. Well, that's a grim way to start. Welcome to the Red Menace. <laughs> we're here live today. We're here. We're here live. We're recording in the same room, and yeah, it's a strange, strange time. It's really weird. We're going to see how this goes. <laughs> All right. Um, do you want to start us off? Um. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, that was a very slow start. All right, so I'm going to start off with a nice story of crime today. Get, jump us right into the true crime element of the story. And this one's from The Great Lakes Advocate. Okay. Um, and it's about, you know, a lot of theft that's happening in the Mid-Coast region. The Mid-Coast region. Yeah. So okay. Mid-Coast residents note bin raiding is still happening in the area. Okay. So, right off the bat, that doesn't seem like that bad a crime, given that you've thrown the stuff out. Well, Rob Douglas of the Great Lakes Advocate thinks it's a, a horrible thing to be happening. <laughs> <laughs> now, Rob, picture this. Rob Douglas. This is, this is the article. It's late at night, and you're heading to bed for work the next morning. You've put the bins out for garbage collection and settled in for the night. So nothing can be more irritating than the rattle and noise of a complete stranger digging through your recycling bin. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm of two minds here. Yes. Because I understand theft is wrong. Yes. This is... Pro but at the same time, and I think B is much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. okay, also, noise is annoying, but like, I will provide... In my presentation here today, I will provide a counter to all <laughs> arguments presented by uh, Rob Doug. Sure. So, this is basically like a public service taking stuff out of future landfill for like actual use. Well, yeah. The people are, it says their purpose, claiming bottles and cans for the return and earn depositing. So, basically, these people are sorting your recycling for free yeah. for you. That's very, like. <laughs> The government's paying... Oh, shit, I've seen a problem with this. This is going to turn into a gig economy thing. So the government's <laughs> going to stop paying people to actually do it professionally because people are going to go and do it for five cents a pop at the, like, at the recycling bin level. Yeah. Also, you can just play some like music while you sleep or something like that, and that'll drown out the noise of the people sorting through the recycling. Or you can just sort your recycling yourself. Now, that's, <laughs> that's a bit silly. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. <laughs> understand the frustration with the noise at night yeah but like what kind of people complain about someone taking recycling from their recycling bin to sort and actually recycle it seems a bit extreme like i'm very it's of in terms of first world problems this is the biggest one yes <laughs> Someone's taking my rubbish someone's, from my bin. Someone sorted my garbage for me. How dare they? I mean, I'd understand, like, someone going through your trash to, like, steal your identity. But, like, you can take my bloody water bottle. What do you imagine? Let's say someone calls the cops on this person. <laughs> the cops turn up. and yeah, sure. So the, the cop, the, the pig car, the... What are they called? The, um... What's the slang derogatory term for a police car? Uh, the pigmobile. <laughs> Let's go with that. The oink, the oink wagon. The oink wagon. <laughs> turns up, like screeches to a halt, does like a cool <laughs> handbrake skid turn, and the the police get out, point guns <laughs> at this person, and they're like, 
stop rooting through the bin. And the person's like, why though? <laughs> You're sorting recycling without a license. It's a criminal crime. <coughs> like what? I don't get what's wrong with it. I don't either. Like I was reading this article and I'm waiting for like the, the, the problem to occur. And I just didn't find it. What punishment would be appropriate to give someone for that? Because what it would be would be collecting rubbish community service. Yeah. Like, which they're already doing. Well, not for free, because the government is technically going to pay them to do it. But, like, still, though. So, it says that the uh, the Mid-Coast Council's Waste and Health Regulatory Services Manager, John Cavanna. Yeah. Um, he says that if community members are subject to bin raiding, they can let us know by completing a report and request form on our website. In the meantime, we're continuing to encourage people to use the return on earn scheme as a means of minimising the amount of eligible containers in their bins. So okay. his advice is sort your own bloody recycling and yeah. other people won't need to do it for you. <laughs> this is... It's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem. Now there's, there's some like... Far um, too much ink has been spilled over There's this. some pictures in this, uh, in this article as well. There's a okay. picture here that's just a series of cans... Okay. Which I assume was taken in a recycling bin. Or and then there's was, a picture of a yellow like, bin just sitting there. I would love if the cans photo wasn't actually taken and it was found from like an image repository. They just Googled cans in bin. I, well, it doesn't say who took it. It probably is. Not, is, is it watermarked? <laughs> no. Now, there's, um, there's actually a poll here. Mm-hmm. It says, are you comfortable with a person taking items out of your recycling bin if it is curbside? Okay. So what would you click? What's your answer? I mean, yes, because that's a help. That's I'm going to click yes. Thing. You are only one of 30%. What the fuck? 69% of people who answered... 69% <gasps> of people who answered this uh, have a problem with people sorting their recycling for them. This is what my grandma's talking about when she says the world's going to shit. <laughs> I'm with John. Sort your own recycling. <laughs> can, I, uh, can I give you a story? Absolutely. This is a similar true crime story. Great. So this is one of my favorite things that these local papers do, which is they write about places that are not themselves. <laughs> so this Wonderful. one is from one of my, my mainstays, the Catherine Times. Oh, Catherine Times. Kathy's back. The headline. New Zealand avocado shortage leads to crime wave. <laughs> Millennials all <laughs> roaming out. <laughs> looking for ways to spend their house deposit. Now... I'm going to get into the actual content of the article sure. in a second, but I just want to address this idea that like in, cause I can see once the olds have gracefully passed into the sure. beyond and the millennials rule the world as we sure. will soon do. Like imagine what would happen if there was an avocado shortage though, cause it would be pandemonium. On a global level. Yeah. Like mm. people would die just from the, like the riots, like day one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the you know By the show two, Doomsday God, Preppers. Yeah, exactly. Uh, none of them have prepped a stockpile of avocados. Well, you can't because they're perishable. Like you need a constant stream of new avocados. Well, if I was a Doomsday Prepper, I would turn my backyard swimming pool into an avocado tree plantation, what? and I would have the world's last supply of avocados. Can you imagine the heartbreak if you were like a quite dumb Doomsday Prepper and you had like a box of avocados that you kept in your bunker? And then when you got down there and you opened it up and they were all like spoiled and you was like, no, just moldy. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You blew it up. Um, the documentary team comes in and says, I don't think your stockpile is going to last very long. That sounds like the ending to like a catfish esque documentary. It's like, we finally got you, you idiot. Okay. New Zealand avocado growers are scrambling to keep up with demand as interest in the highly desired fruit continues to skyrocket and organised crime rings target orchards. (laughs) Avocado (laughs) organised crime thieves. I love it. I can imagine, like, the scene from The Godfather Mm -hmm. where he's like... Oh, I'm going to try and remember what the dude in The Godfather's voice sounds like. Um, I'm going to fail, so I'm just going to (laughs) do... Just do any voice. Just do a voice. Um... We need you to <laughs> pull up outside the orchard. I want five guys, each of them definitely armed. You don't know what these avocado growers get up to. Everybody, and I expect 100 avocados a person. Bring a duffel bag. Avocados, are, they're heavy. 
there people say they're a light fruit, but if you get a hundred of them, you're going to need some strength. Make sure to bring your biggest guys. Now, your your problem there is assuming that the same demographic of organized crime people are the avocado mm. organized crime thieves. I like to imagine it like a gang of millennial hipsters. <laughs> they roll up on their fixie bikes and little razor scooters. Now, what's cool about that is that they could get the like they could get the tech stuff because they're sure being the youths. They know how to use like the drones and the remote iPads and stuff. They'd basically be a Mission Impossible squad. <laughs> Like absolutely parachuting from a drone. I don't think that's how it works, but <laughs> parachuting. parachuting a remote robot from a drone mm-hmm. to steal these right. like avocados, burrowing them underground, like <laughs> <laughs> like a little mole man machine that goes under the avocados and takes the entire tree through the ground. <laughs> I'm just av- ne- the sequel article. Sinkholes start appearing in <laughs> avocado farms in New Zealand. No idea why. <laughs> And we'll know why. Avocado production in New Zealand has risen from about 30,000 trees five years ago to over 200,000 trees this year. Jen Skula, chief executive of New Zealand Avocado, told DPA on Wednesday. But a very light crop, coupled with the fact that the fruit is out of season, has seen prices explode. The average cost of the fruit is five New Zealand dollars. Ooh, the, for one piece! The equivalent of an Australian four bucks fifty. I would be stealing that too! Yes, but like avocados have gotten that expensive here in the they last. They have. And like, did we have a crime wave? Maybe we don't grow avocados locally very much here, so there's not any like to steal. Or do we? I don't know. They're quite cheap at the moment, though. I got an avocado at Woolies the other day for a dollar fifty. I feel like not knowing this, I'm going to incur the wrath of one of my parents again. When I, <laughs> when I forgot that possums were native to Australia, my dad sent me a message that said. Make sure, I love the podcast, just make sure to not dumb yourself down for the podcast, Chris. And I was like, no, Dad, that's just real. That's I how I am. I wasn't dumbing myself down. That's just, just my natural that's how state I am. of being. I'm sorry. You've raised a fool, Father. Earlier this month, police reported an avocado crime wave in the popular Bay of Plenty growing region <laughs> in the Northern Island. In, in the Northern Island. And in April, a series of brazen daylight thefts. <laughs> One of them committed by an ma- elderly man on a mobility scooter were reported. <laughs> An elderly guy just rolls by and starts picking avocados brazenly in the middle of the day. I'm imagining this guy, like this guy on a mobility scooter, basket in front of him, just picking them out, putting them in his thing. And the person comes up to him and is like, um, Oi, mate, what are you doing here? And he goes, What year is it? Because <laughs> he can get away with anything he at can. that point. But, you know, and he knows. Can He's not dumbing himself down. call my daughter for me? <laughs> More avocados, please. Avocados are the only things that help me remember. All right. So it's no. not just millennials wasting their home deposit on avocados. No. Because the... old people actually steal avocados. They don't need to spend it on a home deposit. No. Because I guess the pension, it doesn't have enough for avocados. Well, that's a whole other angle to explore Yeah, here. exactly. The huge demand has resulted in an upswing in production of avocado trees at the country's two major nurseries and an opening of three new nurseries. The high prices have inspired many garden owners to get their own trees, Mm. which is what you suggested earlier. Yeah. Who wouldn't want an avocado tree in their backyard that produced 500 fresh avocados, said Stephen Wade, manager (laughs) of... Linwood Nurseries. Does he are... sell avocado trees? Oh, I think he does. This is sponsored content. <laughs> it is sponsored content. I at the same time though, so that's like five bucks an avocado times f- it produces five hundred fresh avocados. Yes. So that's whatever five hundred that's like fifty thousand, I think. Yeah, fifty thousand. Five hundred times five is twenty five thousand. No, but 500 times... Oh, fuck, yeah. I know. No, it's not. It's, no, it's not. It's 2,500. We're so dumb, oh, Alison. So it's two stupid. and a half grand. I was about to be like, wait, I'm getting an avocado tree, but no. I was about to get my calculator out. <laughs> I, How much some... is he selling an avocado tree for, though? Uh, is it's... he selling it for stupid millennials like us who can't maths? I'm sure it's like five grand or something like that. It's double And he'll be like, there. oh, we can get 25,000 from that. And you'll we say, can, it's two no, and... it's 50. It's, mate. It's, it's, it's two and a half thousand. We got it wrong. <laughs> we got it so, so wrong. Oh, God. Um, my maths. Every time I need to do maths in my head, I just realize how goddamn awful my maths is. And I'm ashamed of it. Do you want to give us another story? 
Sure. Another story for the this smart intellectual <laughs> podcast. For yeah, smart... we're just going to move on from that one. We've made a fool of ourselves about smart mathematics. People. So we'll move on to... Well, we, we did briefly mention about wildlife earlier and yep. Native Australian wildlife yep. and things that are and are not Native Australian wildlife. Yep. Now, you're from the New England region. I am. What is some Native Australian wildlife which is seen regularly in that area? Um, so there's definitely a lot of, um, well, possums, obviously. Yes. You're, you're welcome, Dad. <laughs> There's a lot of kangaroos. There's a couple of echidnas. There's a, my family used to have a koala living on their property, but mm-hmm. it got heartbreakingly struck by lightning. Oh. Um, it was very upsetting. That's not ideal. No. Um, there's a lot of rabbits, but they're not native. Mm. There's definitely a lot of sheep. They're definitely not native. Mm-hmm. Um, wallabies. That's basically just smaller kangaroos. What, uh, what animals do you have in mind, Alice? Panthers. Jesus. I, th- I believe we've talked about panthers before on the podcast. I'm th- not sure if it's made the cut, but panthers are back. That's terrifying. <laughs> this is from, well, actually, there's been two recent panther articles in the Northern Daily Leader. Really? Two panther articles? Two panther articles in a week. This must be shit. Okay, this must be true then. Either that or there's one person who's very into panthers. Now, last time the panther did turn out to be a cat. Which is... <laughs> well, I mean, technically they are cats. So yes. Like... <laughs> but it, it, we've got a panther article here. So this one is, report big cat, panther sightings in New England and Northwest. So this is a panther researcher who wants to know about your panther sightings in the oh, New England area. Like an actual science, like a science person? Oh, uh, mm. Like, okay, okay. I'm going well, to quickly do a quick Google on him and see how please do. legitimate his science is. But he hopes to make a documentary called The Hunt. I'm Let's pretty see. confident that name's taken, my dude. I'm fairly confident. I think you might get, in, you might get intellectual oh, property for that one. Uh, to be honest, doing a quick Google on this guy's name, Vaughn King, it just seems to be all related to Panthers in <laughs> Australia. So I'm not sure I would call him there's no professor or doctor it's just big cat expert I am willing to bet he's a recent zoology major or something Mm. like that looking who's decided he wants to make his name in documentaries sure I'd watch that documentary if you if you said Armadale Panther documentary I'll watch that in a heartbeat so I'm gonna google Vaughn King Panther and see if there's any more information about him aside from big cat expert he's a former player for the Panthers (laughs) <laughs> no, no, it's it's all it's all related to Panthers. He, w- he wants to make a documentary. So says, we know he's not a big rugby boy. Yeah. Have you ever been driving along the highway or walking through the bush and glimpsed a cat that's just too big to be your run of the mill feline? Big cat expert Vaughn King will investigate the myth of big cats in the Australian bush in a new documentary, The Hunt. He is asking members of the Australian public who have seen a big cat in the Australian bush in the last two months to report the sighting. The reports will be investigated over the next six months and filmed for the documentary. So it says that actually New England is a hot spot for panther sightings. Yeah, that's terrifying, frankly. So the, the next article which is related to that is a follow-up on this. Okay. And panther reports pour in from across New England and the Jesus. Northwest. So after that article was published, people from New England and the Northwest have sent in a lot of reports about panther sightings and a lot of, well, photos that, well, it could be a cat. It could, it could be tangent. It's, it's probably a cat. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a large shadow. It, there seems that, that there's one kind of common thread in all these panther photos. Yeah. They're all black cat-like creatures and there's no reference for the size. Now, can I tell you a story about something that I experienced when I was living in, in my many years in the, in the Dale, as the was locals it a call it? Um, well, you just wait. I'll wait. I was driving down the road in the dead of night. Mm-hmm. Stars were flickering above. <laughs> the lights of my, the car headlights were lighting up the fog before me. Mm-hmm. And I heard, out of the fog, meow. (laughs) It was a panther. And out of the fog walked a black cat. And apparently I saw a panther is what I'm now learning. Well, you did see a panther. So that's pretty cool. Uh, So do you want to hear one of the stories? Please. 
let's have a look down here. Uh, okay, we'll read this one. It's Face to Face in Glen Innes. Because her name, I like her name. Her name's Bernadette Maguire. That's a good name. That's a like, name that I would randomize on The Sims. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Bernadette Maguire said she came face to face with a panther in Glen Innes. Out of the front of the old cottage she lived in near the airstrip. About eight years ago, on a cold autumn night, cold autumn night. she heard a tapping at the front door. I opened the door. In runs neighbours remaining wait, 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 duck. Wait, wait. Say the tapping at the front door thing again. <laughs> I heard a tapping at the front door. Is this going to be came in the ASMR podcast? I opened the door. In runs neighbours remaining duck and out charges. <laughs> quirk, 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 quirk. Dog stops and backs up two steps. Oh, I can't read her <laughs> dialogue. <laughs> 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 oh, I Have I ruined your story, else? <laughs> <coughs> Point is, there was a panther and she came face to face <laughs> How did she react to that? Um, well, it, she said it was a friendly panther. Okay. It was no threat to her dog and she wishes she had a chunk of meat for it. Well, I mean, that's basic shit. Everybody carries a chunk of meat with them around. Just Maybe in case this you see is the why panther. panthers are frequenting New England because bloody Bernadette Maguire keeps feeding them chunks them of meat chunks from her of freezer. Meat. I love this idea of someone opens the so you know knock 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 at the door. Dog goes. <laughs> you go out there and it's like this big panther, but it's just looking at you with those little puss in boots from Shrek Two sort of like cute cat <laughs> eyes, and out of your pocket you pull a chunk of raw meat that you've just got there. <laughs> It's like, here you go. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? And then it bites your fucking hand off. <laughs> the author of this article has included some of the Facebook comments about sightings. And just, I mean, I don't mean to grammar shame someone, but yep. Frank Newberry really um, has epitomized, I think, the grammar of a panther enthusiast. Okay. My daughter and I seen a big healthy specimen between something and something about 12 months ago. I can't pronounce the towns. Okay. My daughter and I seen it. She's seen it. They seen it. She seen it. He seen it. We all seen it. It's a big healthy specimen. A big healthy specimen. I like how he was able to yeah. determine that it was healthy. So at least Bernadette's been feeding them good food and not the, you know. Does Bernadette say when hers was from? Um Bernie? Well, it's been all these are in the past couple of months. Okay. Yeah. Because you have to have the past couple of months to submit it. Now if you listener or listeners, plural, mm. depends on, you know. If you've witnessed a big cat in the wild, you can email Jamieson Murphy at fairfaxmedia.com.au to share your story. And you too may feature in the Northern Daily Leader <laughs> as a panther You may sighter. feature in an esteemed newspaper, the Northern Daily Leader. My gosh. And there's lots of cat... You can, well, submit your cat photos or panther photos, whatever you so choose. They do look a lot like cats. I'm going to... Wait up. I'm going to try and take a photo of my family's cat and just do a little Photoshop black and white job on that and send that in and see if I get into this paper. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> we'll start it. We'll start a panther hoax. Because you are from the New, New England area. About that, I have a thought. So this podcast, he said... No, this, sorry. This documentary, he says he's got six months on, right? Yeah. I genuinely think this is an interesting story. I'm going to start a podcast next week, leap start this motherfucker and eat into his territory. I'll come yeah. up with a better title than The Hunt. But we're going to get one that doesn't like immediately. Unfortunately, Black Panther is super copyrighted. <laughs> Black Panther. Just I ain't get, like... I ain't getting that one. I'm not fighting with Disney. Block Panther. <laughs> Block Panther. The new wildlife true crime mystery Block podcast Pan from Armadale. Or Panther, comma, Black there's a whole... Kendrick Lamar released a whole soundtrack for the Black Panther movie, so I can just get one of those and use that as the theme song. I'll just email him and be like, Kendrick, I'm from Australia. I need to use one of your Black Panther songs. I'm making a podcast about an actual Black Panther. Please, 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 please. He will please. absolutely reply to that. There's no, there's no doubt he will reply, personally. Exactly. He will personally sit down in his chair, open up his emails and... Type out a response to that. The first guest on the podcast will... Maybe he'll even write me an original song for the... I'm sure the he will. <laughs> <laughs> Grammy Award shoot, winning shoot rapper Kendrick on, Lamar. Shoot him a message on Twitter. Hey, Kendo, can you... <laughs> can you... 
can you write me an original song for my pan deciding <laughs> podcast? Thanks, mate. Love ya. And then at the end, it'll be like, this podcast is executively, executively produced by Kung Fu Kenny. <laughs> oh, oh, God. You want to hear another story? Absolutely. This one is from the... Give me two seconds, sorry. No problem. This story is from the Toowoomba Chronicle. The headline is, Husband Loses Wife. <laughs> and she's not happy. What? <laughs> so, husband, and then in inverted commas, loses wife, dot, 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 and she's not happy. Okay. Did he just leave her in the supermarket and forget to pick her up? Oh, it's so much worse. <laughs> Did that ever happen to you as a child? Did I ever? Are you asking if I ever got abandoned in a supermarket? <laughs> yes. Not that I remember. I feel like I probably would, unless I repressed it. I think there was a. Uh, my mom. My mom's listening to this, no doubt. But there was a time when she was picking up uh, my youngest sister from preschool. Yeah. And I think it was my other sister got left at the preschool for a little while. Whoops. By my mom. I know. Good work, a, mom. <laughs> as a teen, I was once waiting to get picked up after school, and I had I called my dad after waiting for like half an hour, and I was like, "Yo, dad, you coming to get me?" And he's like, "Ah, fuck." <laughs> I knew I forgot. So, all right, just stay there. <laughs> I'll be there in fifteen minutes. <laughs> You're just letting out our parental trauma now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Hubby is in the doghouse at the moment after losing his wife for a couple of days. <laughs> For a couple of days. Good wife had been feeling ill, and so eventually went off to see her doctor, who put her straight into the hospital. The woman's daughter tried a number of times to ring her mother's husband, but he had inadvertently left the phone slightly off the hook, and no calls were getting through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. To his credit, he hadn't forgotten his wife, and had wandered around the house wondering where she could be <laughs> for two days before word reached him that she was in the hospital. Oh, I'm sorry. When he couldn't find her around the house, he was like, like, oh, she must be in the toilet. She must be in the... T she's been in there for a while, huh? She must be on her period. She's honey, honey, are you so okay long. in there? No, she's not talking to... I guess she's mad at me, huh? She must be mad at me. <laughs> I'm sorry for disturbing you on the toilet, honey. He spent two days just, like, panicking, wondering what it was he did to make her <laughs> so upset to stay in the bathroom for two days. <laughs> he sat down for dinner and wondered why dinner wasn't on the table. <laughs> oh, gosh. How during, does this happen? During this time, his wife, a fiery redhead... Oh, perfect. She fits right in. <laughs> Was wondering why her husband hadn't bothered to visit her. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think... So you're wandering around the house <laughs> for two for 48 hours. Sure. <laughs> At no point do you think to check if the phone, like, maybe call someone. Like, he didn't <laughs> touch the phone at any point during this whole process. <laughs> it stayed slightly off the hook the whole time. <laughs> you th you'd think that, like, you'd at least contact the daughter who's yeah. involved in this situation and be like, have you seen your mother? Is your mother coming to visit you or something? I guess these people don't have, like, mobiles or something. <laughs> like, they, Toowoomba... <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Toowoomba is a radio dead zone. There's no cell phones allowed no there, cell apparently. Phones. I just... Yeah, at what, at what point is it appropriate to be like, hey, I, I feel like give it a, like maybe one day yeah. maximum, but two days? At some point... That's like one call... whole night has passed and you still haven't seen yeah. your wife around the house. Maybe she's not in the house. There's only a few options for what's happened there there's <laughs> one she's left you which given this look <laughs> look i wouldn't blame her <laughs> two like she's been murdered or something yes three she's in the hospital they're the three options <laughs> there's literally nothing else four abducted by aliens abducted by aliens but like i figure that's basically the same as being murdered because you ain't seeing her again for like or in years. the hospital because yeah, exactly. i suppose it's like a well, Medical we all, testing good center, aliens yeah. do deposit people back at the hospital because, like, they, they know, do. yeah, they know it's gonna be necessary. The good aliens deposit people back with enough time has passed in their time that they can do their experiments, but also that it's only been like one second our time, so that no one noticed that they were abducted except for them. 
Yeah. It's nice. I've talked to a lot of alien people. <laughs> I get that. You are you're the expert. <laughs> so this is the we've reached the end. The couple was eventually reunited at the hospital, but our man wasn't exactly welcomed with open arms. No. Can't imagine why. Oh, that's just awful. Men I... these days can't do anything about offending women, <laughs> can they? <laughs> you can't, How dare you she can't be forget upset about that... your wife for two days about offending her these days. But like, what's the mental process? Like, <laughs> if I can't, like, I get a bit paranoid, but if someone doesn't respond to, like, a text all day, I'll be a bit like, you okay? Like, is something yeah. happened? And at some At some stage, I would be, like, contacting someone, at like least. Like, the police. Police. Saying, hey, I haven't seen my wife in 36 hours. Do you guys know what's up? Have you heard anything? And they say, yeah, she's at the hospital, dipshit. And it's not a big, it's not a big city. It's like a town. Someone will know yeah. where your wife is. Far out. <laughs> do you, where do you think he was looking? Like, just in the house, he opened up the pantry. <laughs> all the drawers, all the covers. <laughs> he unscrewed the hot water heater. He was like, maybe. He had a bit of a man look around. <laughs> I love that. He didn't even really look. He just he went to like a couple of the rooms. He was like, "Honey, <laughs> no, I guess she's not home." All right. And then, like six hours later, he's watched like half a season of Netflix. At this point, he looks around. He's like, "All right, I guess the binge continues." <laughs> and he just kept doing that for like two days. Oh, I love stories like this because it's just no one's no one's been hurt except for emotionally. And the person is in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, but. That's not as a result of the story. That's it as seems a like she's of, okay, I think. She's, I'm sure she... Well, she's we, not okay with her husband. Not emotionally okay, not emotion- no. <laughs> oh, dear. You, you have anything for me? Um, I'm just trying to decide between a couple. Okay, I'll do this one. Uh, because this one was submitted by one of our lovely young listeners. Oh, really? Yeah. A lovely young listener called Julie from Port Macquarie. Nice. Who is my mom? Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Now, she's got a theory about the cows that went missing last week. Oh, okay. Uh, because, well, this is from Kendall, which is near Port Macquarie. Okay. Not Kendrick Lamar. Well, I wish. It's got Ken in it. So if we can cool. get Kendrick Lamar to listen to this podcast, I will die a very happy man. <laughs> Just him. Just Kendrick Lamar. I can give a fuck about anyone Kendrick else. Lamar. I want Kendrick Lamar to hear this. Now, it says... Cow rescued from septic tank at Kendall. Oh, no. So, well, I mean, that, okay, that sounds positive, but oh, no, in well, terms ca- of the implications. The, the cow's been rescued. Yes. So emergency services assisted in a dramatic rescue at Kendall on August 14th after a cow fell into a septic tank. What a shitty situation. <laughs> that was awful. You really opened your... Wait. No, I can't think of a point to respond to that one with, but I, I guarantee there will be a few more. <laughs> <laughs> he was really in the shit with that one. Exactly. At about 9am on Tuesday, the owner of a large cattle farm on Cross Creek Road at Black Creek, Kendall, discovered one of his Santa Gertrudis. I'm assuming that's like a bespoke cow or some <laughs> sort. It's an artisanal cow. <laughs> an artisanal cow. Not one of your standard run-of-the-mill cows. I'm just going to do a quick Google and see what this bad boy looks like. I, I have a hunch it's going to look like a cow, Alison. Ah, oh, it sure does. It's brown. Oh, really? Well, I mean, appropriate. And it looks like he's been hit in the gym. You wouldn't even be able to tell it was brown. <laughs> Not after the septic tank situation. So one of his steers had gained access to the house yard and fallen through the top of the septic tank. He was really pissed off. Oh, <laughs> And that's essentially the story. So, okay, so what's, what's your mum's theory? Like, that the cows have all been left in septic tanks? or Well, perhaps, I okay. suppose. It must be a large septic tank We're to gonna house have to call, 500 cows. Call upon people from the New South Wales entire state, because please check your septic tanks for cows. Just put, like, a glass to the side of the septic <laughs> tank. Check, listen for moos. That's the sound a cow makes, for those of you who don't know. If you're mm. as intelligent as us, you might need to... Ooh. Oh gosh! <laughs> oh, that's the worst. All right, I'm done. <laughs> finished. I'm so sorry. It's finished. That's done. It's finished. <laughs> I can't look at it anymore. I realized. Um, I, I read a further report about that story from last week, and I was a little bit heartbreak heartbroken to just learn that 
the cows were actually stolen over a period of years oh. and not all at the same time, which I think makes my reaction slightly dramatic. But That's sad. Still, though, I still think stealing one cow is, like, in of itself. An it is. It is. We're not getting back into the cow theft situation. No, 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 but no, I'm sorry. it is. it is a... Uh, I think stealing one cow, you deserve a commendation for that. Exactly. Um, so this article, the actual article um, has little substance, but I enjoy the headline. Sure. And I think it's going to inspire a fun guessing game. Okay. <laughs> one thing you should never drink on a plane. Plane, jet fuel. Jet fuel. Um, Arsenic. Arsenic. <laughs> Bleach. <laughs> Keep going. Um, uh, yeah. But like stuff Cyodine. You, yeah, okay, but like stuff you could find on a plane. You can find jet fuel on a plane. That's true. I'm sure you can find bleach yeah, on I a feel, plane too. I'm imagining... To okay, all right. Pivot this story. Baby's piss. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> imagine someone... Who's like, they've decided they're going to drink jet fuel on this plane. <laughs> and they're like, okay, this is going to be an elaborate Mission Impossible-esque heist where they're in the, in the air. So the plane's at 40,000 sure. feet or whatever it is. They pop the escape door. <laughs> the plane depressurizes. Like four people get sucked out. They like have roped themselves to the plane and they walk out onto the wing. And they're like, I got to get me some of that fuel. They've got a water bottle and they just kind of put it behind the jet engine. And turn it on like a top Yeah, exactly. It's like... <laughs> and then they slip and fall off at the very end. <laughs> and they drink the jet fuel on the way down. Oh, God. So what shouldn't you drink on a plane? Um, plain coffee. Apparently it's not very good. <laughs> Literally okay. the entire story. Sure. Is that the story? <laughs> yeah, that's from the... Um, also from the Toowoomba Chronicle. Wow. Well, um, there you go. Plain coffee isn't very good. That's breaking news. Um, do you have any more? Uh, I've just got one here. It's actually, it's not quite that funny. It's just a very interesting story about some strange local history. Okay. I'm from down. Gloucester. Uh, so it's a, the headline goes, Gloucester's Majestic Theatre's History to be added to Midcoast Stories website. So this is a bit of a mystery about okay. the movie theatre. So it says, the history of Gloucester's majestic theatre is as dramatic as the movies that played there for over 50 years. Okay. Albert Augustus Smith. I like his name. That is a good name. It sounds like the name of a racist, like, <laughs> company owner from the 1700s, but like... Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. But he's from 1935. Uh, Al- not, not mutually exclusive. <laughs> Albert Augustus Smith, baker, bought the property that in 1926 and built a bakery and picture theatre. During Smith's times in Gloucester, a number of unlucky events occurred. Uh Uh-oh. In 1927, fire nearly destroyed his theatre, but for the brave efforts of Constable Lett. I don't know who he is, but he's a brave man. He's a brave man. He put out a whole theatre's worth of fire. Well, he's a constable, so, you know, that's a good word. You want to have another run at that word for me there, Alison? Because you pronounced it in a very specific way. Constable. All right. You're pronouncing it with a hard U. I'll say that. <laughs> that's how it's pronounced, is it not? Const- or do you say constable? Constable. Constable. Not, I'm not going to repeat it because I feel like it's more okay for you to say okay. what it sounded like to okay. me. Okay, I believe it's an R. <laughs> I'm going to... Constable. Who says constable? Normal people who don't want to <laughs> sw- drop the C-bomb when they're trying to talk to a policeman. Okay, let's... How to pronounce constable according Jesus. to YouTube. Let's listen. It's like a gut punch every <clears> time. <throat> it takes a while to get into the actual pronunciation because there's a lot of, like, flying, yeah. interesting effects going on. And oh, then cool. it says it. Constable. Eat shit, Alison. No, it says constable. <laughs> Fucking hell. <Constable. laughs> Anyway, back to the story. Yes. <laughs> Constable Let. Oh, uh, where were we up to? Okay, so Constable Let. Thank you. Has put out the fire. Uh, in 1930, Smith's wife Edith mysteriously disappeared, never to be seen again. Or did she just go to hospital and he never bothered to check? <laughs> yes, that is what happened. He left the phone off the hook. Uh, suspected of killing her, Smith's ovens were searched, but no links were made. 
It's dark. Yeah, Jesus. In 1934, just after Smith remodelled the Majestic Theatre, he was accused of setting fire to the rival Star Theatre across the road. I'm sensing a pattern here. (laughs) A lot of arson. (laughs) A lot of arson. A disappeared wife. Yeah. In an oven context as well, like... (laughs) This is my favourite part. Oh, God. In 1935, Smith agreed to sell his theatre and bakery, but later tried to, you know, go back on that. When he couldn't get out of the sale, he blew up the buyer's house. For Jesus which he was Christ! Jailed. Holy shit! Shit's going down in Gloucester in the 1930s. <laughs> this ends with the final scene from Inglorious Bastards, where there's just a theatre burning Absolutely. and thousands of people inside. Like, that's... in. There I'm needs pre- to be a movie made out of this guy. It's yeah. just like... Can we get the rights to get this? On this that. is really yeah. good. <laughs> it's actually quite interesting for local history. Smith was no stranger to fire. In 1917, he had been jailed for setting fire to his first wife's material shop. His bakery in Comboyne was set alight after it was sold to new owners. Huh. So, well, that seems dumb. So, um, well, he, he burnt down his ex-wife's house. Yes. He burnt, he down, burnt his... down his bakery after he sold it to someone else. He probably burnt down his actual wife. He probably burnt... Yeah, well, he burnt down his theatre, I assume, to mm-hmm. maybe get some insurance payouts. Mm-hmm. He burnt down a rival theatre. He blew up he bombed someone's a, house. He bombed a house. This is a terrorist that we're dealing with. Yeah. Quite literally, actually. It, like, it should, but only in the movie theatre business. He's, he's a bakery movie theatre terrorist. <laughs> Although Smith was often suspected of these crimes, he was rarely convicted. That's, in, that's nuts. It's crazy. I can just imagine the judge being like, <sighs> Mr. Smith. Again. <sighs> I cannot sentence you. Please don't burn my house down. <laughs> maybe that's why he wasn't sentenced. Like the fear of the jury. Maybe. Or maybe he just made really good bread. And he was the only one in town who made bread that good. And no one, you know, the judge did not want to eat the bad bread. Do you think there's something in the... You can only make really, really good bread with, like, a heart that dark. (laughs) You can only really know how to bake bread if you know how to bake homes. (laughs) Sure. He uses... You know how, like, um, those kind of ash and charcoal buns are very popular these days? Perhaps he was the one who started that. You've got to practice that somewhere. That's how it was discovered by an arsonist. (laughs) He He picked up the charcoal from, like, the houses he'd burnt down. And he he took a bite and he was like, "Mm, actually, Mm, this would be great in some brioche. Um, I've got, I've got one, it's not really a story, it's just a funny headline that I think has legs. Throw it out there. So this is also from the Toowoomba Chronicle. I found all my best, all my best work comes from the Toowoomba Chronicle. Mm -hmm. Simon Whitlock is still the daddy of Australian darts. Oh, no. What is the victory hierarchy of Australian darts <laughs> if daddy is the top one? Oh, I don't want to know. Daddy's the top one. Mummy's the <laughs> second one. Now that's getting into some territory there, because you're saying that... You know what? That's a good point. Yep. Mummy and daddy are equal titles. Mummy and daddy are equal titles. Okay. So I guess it would be like, maybe if there's men's and women's divisions, it would be daddy is the winner of the... <laughs> <laughs> the, the men's darts competition. Yeah, and... sure. Mummy is I'm the top. Of... If we just use like typical names of like stereotypes of gay men, we could have daddies. We could have bear. Could be the second <laughs> one. <laughs> we could have twink. Could be third. There's so many good <laughs> options. Oh no! <laughs> they started renaming in you know on the dart sports how they have like yeah. all of the numbers. They've started renaming that with like different names of like. Different things Maybe that is to try and attract a new audience to darts. Because Someone... does it? Who? What? Does anyone watch darts? Yeah, it's uh, exclusively watched by gay men. <laughs> well, apparently, <laughs> the new league is at least. Oh, do we want to finish up? Yeah, and I, I think I'll leave you with a good pun that I've found in Port Macquarie News. All right, do you mind and... if we? Do you mind if we do the the? End bits. Absolutely. Um, If you like the show, make your friends listen to it. Like, force Force them them to. to. You know what to do. We just heard the story about the guy in Gloucester. You can 
Tie them to a chair. Play it over the speakers. They'll thank you for it later. I they promise. sure will. <laughs> Don't hold me to that, though, Don't please. Don't burn their houses down. Don't burn their houses down. But... Unless you think it'll work. I'm winking. Yeah. Don't burn their houses down. <laughs> Um, if you like the show, it would also be really good if you give us a review on iTunes. Mm-hmm. Um, send in any questions you have to redmenacecast at gmail.com. Any or stories. stories? Stories, not questions. There we go. Um, and just thank you for listening. It's super fun to do. Yeah, it's great fun. Uh, I'm Chris Bolson. And I'm Alison Hall. And here's a story about, well, it's just a, a slideshow of cat photos. It says... Perfectly meowless montage of fabulous felines. Fucking hell. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> per- perfectly meowless. Perfectly meowless montage. Alright, I'm out, I'm dead. This I'm is done. The end. Yeah. Last episode. <laughs> Goodbye. Podcast's <everyone>. done. <laughs>